Hi guys, Dan Malone here from MassLive.com alongside, as always, as always, Andrew Sear of the Massachusetts Daily Collegian. We are back at the Mullen Center a uh, little while after a uh, 90 to 66 loss for UMass against the Providence Friars, the uh, top 10 ranked Providence Friars. Uh, just today, the AP poll came out, they went from 14 to 10. So, I mean, when you play a top 10 team, I don't think you expect, I mean, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I expected this game to kind of go like this, especially when we found out right before tip-off that Chris Dunn, a National Player of the Year candidate, probably a, a top lottery pick in the NBA this year, uh, was returning from a stomach flu that had forced him to miss two and a half games. And, uh, you know, he, he did his thing tonight. Ben Bentel did his thing. Uh, did more than his thing, I yep. would say. Um, and, you know, UMass never led in this game. They were, as Derek Collick said, dominated from the jump. Um, and I think this is one that UMass kind of just wants to put behind it, go into the holiday break and, and move on and come on the other side and get ready for Atlantic 10 play. Yeah, it is, Dan. And, and from the start, like like both of you and Kellogg said, this this game was completely out of reach. Uh, Providence dominated in all aspects of the game, by far the more talented team. Um, and I think when you looked at the schedule when it was l released that this was probably going to be UMass's toughest game um, of the year, and it proved so. And going back to Dunn and Bentel, the two of them together just played so well. They complemented each other so perfectly. You saw Dunn, his ability, his court vision, his ability to press the floor and just find guys cutting to the basket was was very impressive. And Bentel scoring 11 of 16, he, he had three three-pointers too. 32 so, points, 32 rebounds. points. They both, yeah. they both had double-doubles. Chris had 14 points and 11 uh, assists and six rebounds to yeah. go along with it. He, they really filled up the stat sheet. And I think you come into this game expecting if Dunn plays, he's going to do that. Uh, I know Derek Kellogg didn't think that, that Bentel was going to have quite that night. I wrote that he you know, was doing his best to trick the Mullen Center fans here into thinking that he was the, the future lottery pick. And he's just a sophomore. Yeah. And he was tremendous. He dominated the paint. He made some nice defensive plays. He stepped back, hit a couple threes. Um, those two... When they're going like the way they were tonight, they can beat a lot of teams. They can make a run to the Final Four. They can, and this team is very talented, like you mentioned. They didn't have their best three-point shooter in Fizikist either. Um, made a total of 10 three-pointers as a team. You saw Derek uh, Kellogg go to a little bit of 2-3 zone, something that we have seen in spurts. But, but not this, this much. Yeah, this yeah. was definitely uh, the game they used it the most. Um, it didn't looked, work. <laughs> it, it looked okay for a few possessions, but... Just UMass's lack of ability to get rebounds hurt him. And then once Dunn was able to, once they got the rebound and pushed the floor to Dunn, UMass was left for dust. Um, Dunn, so many fast break points, the 14-2 uh, to two advantage for Providence. And he looked at points on the page, 46-22. to 22. Just UMass dominated in all aspects of this game. Yeah, the lead, and, the lead got up to 25 points at one point. In the second half, UMass never really got it under 20 points, maybe a little bit. Every time they'd string together a couple baskets, Providence would be right back there to kind of say, no, 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 you're not making this comeback. Um, and I think that's what good teams with a veteran leader like Chris Dunn do. He didn't have to play a million minutes tonight. I think that's good for him considering he was sick coming in. Um, and, you know, UMass just never really threatened. We saw kind of fans kind of leaving a little bit early. And, you know, these, these games happen against good teams. And, like I said, it'll be one UMass wants to kind of, kind of look beyond. They did. Um, but I think if you're UMass fans, the one uh, positive you can take away is uh, the return of Antoine's For face. Sure. Uh, missed the first 10 games of what the university uh, deemed a personal issue. Uh, played 31 minutes the most of anyone. Uh, him and Trey Davis both played a team high 31 minutes. 31 um, minutes, and he hadn't played in six weeks. Exactly. He just started practicing on Saturday, and we weren't sure what to expect. Yeah. I don't know. I, didn't, I had no idea how many minutes he'd play. I thought maybe 10 to 15. He'd grab a couple of rebounds, take a couple shots. And he was out there all game. It helped. I mean, it, it helped. I mean, the silver lining of getting blown out is that he could play all game. They could kind of mix and match. Um, but uh, Derek Kellogg came and said that having him back out there also created some problems with their lineups. It did. And it's just going to be a matter of what units work well together, when when to put him in, um, with what size lineups, uh, when you want to put him at the five, when you want to move him to the four. So I think it's going to be a big mix, mixing and matching game for Kella. Uh, they got one more game against LIU Brooklyn before A-10 conference. It's a good another little practice it, go around it is. before they start. And I think that Kellogg, um, especially in practice, is going to try to mix and match mm -hmm. as much as possible because you saw Spates, he, he played pretty well in spurts. Yeah, uh, 11 he, points, 9 rebounds. rebounds. Exactly. I mean, he almost pulled out a double-double after not playing all season. That's not bad. Yeah. a team like Providence, too. And it's not like he played perfectly either. He's still 3 of 12, four some yeah. shots. Missed some um, free throws. Missed some free throws. Um, but the beginning, it was a good start. I think that he is a player that they're going to have to rely on moving forward, For especially sure. uh, with the lack of uh, experience inside. And you saw Bergantino played two minutes. Um, 
Rashawn Holloway, Malik Hines, and neither of them really had the best performance, and they're still learning. As much as Rashawn's proven that he can score and play well inside, both him and Hines still have a lot of growing to do. They still aren't playing as many minutes as we would have liked to see him um, at this point in the season. But I think that space is going to be a guy that, you're gonna, regardless of the situation, you're going to have to rely on. And I think that his ability to stretch the floor is going to be something that Kellogg and the rest of UMass will have to rely on moving forward, especially once conference play begins. Yeah, like you said, that's the big silver lining here. They got him back. They have a little bit of time now. They kind of get into, you know, for them, this is what really matters. This Atlantic 10 stretch after LIU Brooklyn. They started at LaSalle. Um, it's good to get him back down to get a little chemistry. They're going to have a few days off here. They don't play again until uh, the 29th after yep. after the break. So uh, it'll be a while before we're back here. But, Sir, thank you for, no problem. for joining us, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Happy holidays, guys.